All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from K Hux Nation. And in today's episode, this is the episode I've been talking about for quite a while now in the Dragalia Lost episodes. Um, about the fact that I've been meaning to make this video for quite some time now. And I, I, I have quite a few videos I'm making today. So I figured why not? I'll, I'll just knock it out right now. Uh, but this is going to be the video talking about some of the best healers in the game as of right now at least in my opinion um so that way and i know a lot of you guys by watching my videos have started playing dragalia lost as of recently so i'm hoping that this video will serve as kind of like a uh, a guide or reference point for you as to which healers you might want to focus on um, or chase for or whatever in order to make sure that your uh, your your team stays alive more often and such so Without further ado, let's get started. Now, as of right now, I pretty much only have four healers I want to talk about. The only reason why I have Hilda Guardia up here is because I'm going to use her as a reference. Um, but first up, I don't know if I want to talk about the best one or, or uh, go from the bottom. Um, I guess we'll, go, we'll start from the bottom. Okay, so kind of at the very bottom, I have Vixel. Okay, yeah. I have Vixel as kind of like our fourth place healer. Um, and he's fourth place primarily because of like kind of like two reasons. A, he's a four star unit. So his overall stats and such are going to be a little bit lower than what a five star unit could be able to reach. Uh, so it's going to make it more difficult for him. I, and B, even though he has his abilities are good. He lacks a bit of utility compared to the other healers in this list um, to make him like at the very top. But he is, in my opinion, still one of the best, at least like top four or five-ish best healers in the game. So even though he lacks a little bit more, just slightly more compared to the others, he's still pretty good. Uh, so I, honestly, I don't agree with the character tiers. Just ignore the character tier that on this website. Okay, that it's for something else. Just ignore it. Okay, but at the very least, I place him as let's about like fourth place, kind of, uh, in terms of usability. And we'll go over each of their abilities and stuff too, so that way you're not just completely baffled as to why and stuff. Um, so his first activated ability is called Spirited Song. We'll zoom in a bit so you can read this a little bit better too. Okay, his first activated ability is called Spirited Song. It restores HP to all allies and continues healing over the next 15 seconds. It's a very kind of basic healer ability that you'll see quite often. Um, multiple other healers have this as well. And in my opinion, in order to be a strong healer, you at least need this type of ability in order to be truly viable, in my opinion. Um, you'll see a bunch of healers that will just say uh, restores HP to all allies and that's it. Okay, that is not enough, in my opinion, to be worthy of a being a viable healer. You need to be able to he burst heal them immediately on the spot on top of having continued healing uh, over a period of time afterwards as well. So to me, that is like the absolute basis to be a viable healer. Um, and Vixel is just barely meeting that requirement. Okay, uh, his second ability, activated, abil activated ability, is kind of what helps is more or less the main reason what's put him on this list in the first place is agitato agitato assault increases the potency of the entire team's recovery skills uh we'll read the level two recovery skills by 10 percent for 10 seconds and increases their energy level by one stage and it does the whole energy level stuff okay this is kind of the main reason why he's put on this list uh, because of the fact that this can have huge potential the fact that you're increasing the potency of recovery skills by the entire team, not just the healer himself, is great. Because that means, at the very least, it makes uh, any recovery skills from, let's say, healing double buffs that you, you might have on worm, pr worm prints and you're attached to your other characters, those get buffed as well. So if you activate any defense skills to activate those healing double buffs, boom, they do way more healing too. So it's it's because of other skills like that why Agitator Assault really puts 
pixel on this list in my opinion um and real quick we'll go over his passive abilities his passive abilities are really basic and honestly are yeah they're they're kind of basic there's nothing special about them uh it's just full hp healing at 13 percent or 15 percent um 100 sleep resistance uh skill prep at 50 percent i've never been a huge fan of skill prep sure they help but they're they're kind of like a one one use type thing which i don't really find very viable i prefer like consists consistency if that makes sense as well as culpability is recovery potency six percent so for the most part most of his kit is very basic it's it's the agitato assault though that kind of put him out as like the bottom of this list um he's, in a way you can almost think of him as like a an honorable mention if that makes sense okay now next up on the list we have like a bit of a tie between Heinwald and Valentine's Hildegarde, okay? And they're kind of like on the opposite side of the spectrum. We'll go, uh, we'll talk about, uh, no, I guess we'll talk about Heinwald first. Uh, they're kind of tied. Second, they're tied for second place, third place, however you want to look at it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say... Heinwald is probably third place just because of the fact that Heinwald is more of a DPS healer. He's probably one of the only DPS healers in the game as of right now, too. Okay. And we'll go take a look at his abilities real quick. Ayata. So his first activated ability is called Call of Chaos. It deals shadow damage to the target and nearby enemies. So he has both single target and AoE area of effect. Uh, and restores HP to all allies. Okay, so not only does it do DPS, but it also heals at the same time. That's why he's, he's here. Like, it's really good. If the attack connects, restores an additional 3% of the damage inflicted as HP to all allies. This recovery caps at 8% of their maximum HP. So, this is what I was saying before. He's like a DPS healer. One of the only ones in the game as of right now which is really good okay not only does he does he just restore does he heal off the bat but if the attack actually hits he can do an additional amount of healing at the same time too that's pretty cool his second active activated ability abyssal connection actually ties into his first activated ability um when it activates for 10 seconds during the abyssal connection uh, the, the character's strength, the user's strength, increased by 20%, and the Call of Chaos skill is powered up, the first ability, okay? Also increases the strength of nearby allies by 10%. So not only does it act as like a support ability by buffing your allies' strength, it, in, it buffs up your first activated ability, making it stronger, okay? And also increases your own strength by 20%. So basically, by activating activating abyssal connection your call of chaos is just hugely buffed so that whole if the attack connects restores an additional three percent of the damage inflicted as hp to all allies that portion right there gets hugely buffed as well you're dramatically increasing the amount of healing that you can do uh with this character so if you you can basically make uh what is this uh Critical. Uh, you can make Heinwald almost like give him like a bit of a DPS build, and boom, he can do like he can do crazy amounts of healing on top of being able to dish out some uh, damage as well. So that's that's kind of why he's on this list. He's he's one of the only care healers in the game right now that can kind of do something like this. So very good. Uh, his passive abilities are kind of basic, uh, but do kind of feed into what he's trying to do anyway. So. He has skill damage plus 35% at HP 70%. That feeds into the whole, the more damage, the more HP he can heal type thing. Uh, paralysis resistance 100%, skill prep 100%, uh, recovery potency 10% for the co, uh, the co ability. Okay, so nothing too special about the passive abilities, although uh, they do help feed into the whole DPS stuff, okay? Um, but yeah that's why he's on here he's like i guess you could say he's like second third place depending on how you want to think about it whether or not he's tied with valentine's hit guard or not um i'll show him again real quick in case you forgot what he looks like this is what he looks like all right next up 
Valentine's Hildegarde. This is a limited time uh, unit though, only comes out around Valentine's Day. We had it, or the Valentine's event, I should say. We had it fairly recently, and I think it just went away already. So it's gonna be a while since this comes out. But Valentine's Hildegarde is also really good. In a nutshell, she's basically a super amped up version of the five star Hildegarde uh, unit that you get as like default when you first start the game and stuff, okay? Um, it's basically just a super amped up version of Hildegarde. Uh, so we'll go over her abilities real quick. Yada yada. All right. So Blooming Love is her first activated ability. It restores HP to all allies. Okay, so off the bat, it already does burst healing. Good, check mark. All right, continuous healing over the next 15 seconds. Good, second check mark. Already a viable healer. That's what I mentioned for Vixel originally as well. Okay, uh, this guy. Okay, that's what I mentioned about him as well. Uh, this guy barely met those check marks. Okay, but Valentine's Star Hit Guard has both of those on top of. He increases the entire team's energy levels by one stage. Oh my god. So not only does she have burst healing and have uh over uh healing over time as well, but she has the utility of energy too. And she's a fire unit. That's worth noting. Most most uh, units that have any sort of energy related abilities tend to be either light and sometimes uh, darkness, okay, units. Very rarely are they ever tied to other, other attributes in the game, okay? So not only, so it, it's huge because obviously in case you're not aware, uh, energy levels in this game basically help buff up moves once you reach energy uh, a five energy level once you reach five energy levels your moves become buffed up and they can do like amplified effects effectively so she in a way she acts as kind of like a uh, a support and being a a, via, a super viable healer so very good it's worth noting that Heimwell does not have healing over time all right, he only has burst healing and that's it. He has large, he has larger burst healing than other healers though, because of the whole DPS stuff I mentioned earlier, but he doesn't have healing over time. Whereas Valentine's Hitter Guarded does. Okay, and that's just her first ability, all right? Her second ability, Holy Protection, grants all teammates a one use shield that nullifies damage to less than 30% of the user's maximum HP. That is the same thing that what a normal Hildegarde has at base, okay? It's the same thing. Uh, let's see, I scroll down. Yep, it's roughly the same thing, yeah. Um, however, it also increases their energy levels by two stages. Again, really good, it's, it's kind of nutty. So between these two skills alone, Blooming Love and uh, Holy Protection, not only are they still getting roughly the same benefits that normal Hildegarde has, but Valentine's Hildegarde provides the additional benefit of having healing over time and increasing energy levels by one or three stages, depending on how quickly you use Blooming Love and Holy Protection together. Okay, uh, so you still get the shield protection from this, like normal Hildegarde, on top of the energy buffs. Uh, as well as the healing over time and energy buffs from Blooming Love and uh, compared to just normal Hildegarde. So it's a huge amount of healing, energy buffs, and you still get the base defensive properties as well from normal Hildegarde with Valentine's Hildegarde. So it, she's a super viable healer. She's more of the raw healer aspect compared to Heinwald, like I mentioned earlier. That's why I was saying they're kind of like opposite sides of the same coin. Heinwald's more of the more of like the DPS version of healing, whereas Hildegarde is more on like more of the traditional healing aspect. Okay. Uh, her passive ability, Striking Strength Debilitator, grants to use this four strike, a 50% chance to reduce enemy strength by 3% for 10 seconds. That's really good. Increases a 70% chance at uh, level two. 100% uh, stun resistance, 100% skill prep, 
and recover potency 10% for the co ability. Okay, pretty decent. The debilitator, though, is it's worth noticing. You don't see many units that have this type of uh, passive ability. So being able to not only debuff and provide energy levels at the same time and super viable healing on top of two, very solid, very solid healer. Okay. Now, next up, in my opinion, opinion is probably one of the best healers in the entire game as of right now. You guys are more than free to uh, to disagree or debate with me in the comment section down below. But personally, I believe that Nurse Aileen is the best healer in the game. And we'll go over it real quick. Let's see. Uh, where does this go? Her first activated ability is called Medicinal Cure. Restores HP to all allies. Good. Burst healing. Continuous healing over the next 15 seconds. Good. A uh, period over time healing, like I mentioned before. Those are at least the required ones. And activates skill shift. This is, this is where things get a little nutty for her. She basically has like multiple utility. Uh, phase 2 adds an additional 8% increase to the entire team's defense for 5 seconds. Awesome. Okay, so you have defense buffs. Which means that you can also help proc or trigger any teammates double buff skills that they might have. Uh, either from their own passive abilities or from their worm prints. So that's fantastic. And phase 3 adds an additional 5% to the team's strength for 10 seconds. Great. Okay. Even better. More damage. Across the whole team. Uh, oh, my bad. That was for level 1, my bad. For uh, level 3, it's an additional 15% to the entire team's defense. And it's 10% to the team's strength. My bad. I read the wrong number. Okay, so pretty good. Her second ability, Nataropathy, restores HP to the user and nearby allies and removes stun. That's kind of a basic ability, but one of the part of the reason why she's on this list is because of the fact that she has two abilities that both heal. Okay. None of the other healers on this list that I've showed you do this. Okay. They only have one activated ability that heals and the other ability kind of helps support that a little bit if that makes sense okay whereas nurse alien actually has two activated abilities that heal all right so that way let's say you use medicinal cure which also provides support buffs at the same time okay and can also trigger double buffs if needed too uh, but let's say you activated this and then all of a sudden right afterwards you take a huge bow you need healing immediately afterwards Nurse Aileen can still provide more burst healing with Neteropathy immediately afterwards. Okay, so you can basically you can basically like chain heal. On top of having burst heal, heal over time, support buffs. You have a second healing ability that also removes stun too. It, not really it's not too important, but I guess it's worth mentioning. Um, so it's basically chain heal at the same time. That is huge. The best way to think about it is that Nurse Aileen is basically the most raw form of healing in the game as of right now compared to any other healer, in my opinion. So, um, her passive abilities, okay, are she has skill pep, 70%, that's okay. Uh, stun resistant, 100%, that's kind of standard. Um, this is what really makes it for me in my opinion though for the passive but it's united haste one increases skill gauge, skill gauge fill rate to relative to the number of active team members the more active team members the greater the increase would be would be like i mentioned before i never really cared too much about skill prep just because the fact that skill prep is kind of like a one-time use type of thing i prefer consistency throughout the entire battle, especially for the more harder, uh, difficult content as well. Those, those battles will take a while. Being, over, being able to use an ability only at the very start of course doesn't help me <laughs> too much for long drawn out battles. So, and this is also partially why I consider haste to be one of the best mechanics in the entire game. So she has one of the best mechanics in the entire game um, to help get her, her skills faster so not only does she have insane value from her skills, being able to have burst heals, heal over time, 
uh, support buffs, okay, on top of chain heal, but she can get them a whole lot faster from her own passive too. Uh, being able to let you chain heal even more, more often. So it's kind of nuts. Uh, I think that was it in terms of her abilities, right? So yeah. Oh, her co-ability is recovered by C60%, but that's not really too important. Okay, so that's kind of why, in my opinion, I personally believe Nurse Aileen is the best healer in the game. Just because of just how much healing she can consistently do so often. without And this is not including any, like, worm primps or uh, weapon abilities at all whatsoever, either. Uh, just on her own, she is, like, the most raw form, pure healer in the game. Uh, who also has really good utility as well, too, from her uh, medicinal cure. Being able to provide uh, defense buffs as well as strength buffs. Strength buffs, in my opinion, uh, is more like icing in the cake. I would have been fine with just the defense buffs alone because, like I mentioned before, they can help, uh, they can help trigger any double buff abilities that your team may have. But other than that, that was it for today's video, guys. Go ahead and let me know what your thoughts and opinions are about healers in the comment section down below. Who do you think is the best? Do you agree, disagree, all that good stuff? Uh, just to recap, I consider Nursaline to be the very best healer in the game. Valentine's Hildegarde and Heinwald are kind of tied, more or less, depending on what usage you want to use them for. Uh, in terms of second, third place, Vixel, I consider to be last place amongst the best healers. So even though she's even though he's not, say, you know, top within his top three, uh, he's still very good. Although he just barely meets the requirements to be considered like, you know, a top healer, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So other than that, go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more videos to this one. My name is Brian from KX Nation. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.